Welcome to our mission. Every day, people from all over the world come to visit the old Spanish missions of the Southwest. One of the most popular is Mission San Juan Capistrano because of its romantic myth of the swallows. Legend tells us that the swallows return each year on St. Joseph's Day to rebuild their nests. But in truth, some arrive earlier and others return days later. But the missions are not legend. They remind us of a time when Spain ruled what is now northern Mexico and the southwestern United States. On this northern frontier of colonial Spain, the mission was one of the most important centers of Spanish influence. By the middle 1700s, Spanish padres of the Catholic Church had established many missions in northern Mexico and Baja California, and across the present day states of Arizona, New Mexico and Texas. Father Kino was one of the most important of the early missionary explorers. More than 250 years ago, he explored the deserts of northern Mexico and Arizona. His explorations led to the founding of more than 25 missions in this hot, dry land. During this period, there were no Spanish settlements in Alta California until the outposts of Russian fur traders began to threaten Spain's northern frontier. To protect the frontier, Spain's Inspector General, José de Galvez, directed Father Junipero Serra to extend the influence of the missions into Alta California. From the mother mission of Loreto in Baja California, Father Serra moved northward to establish the first mission in Alta California at San Diego in 1769. After San Diego, he established Mission San Carlos at Carmel, which became the mission headquarters for Alta California. Eventually, this mission chain grew to 21, and Mission San Luis Rey, built after Father Serra's death, became the largest mission in all of colonial Spain. Today, in the garden at Mission San Fernando, this statue honors Father Serra, one of the best remembered of all the Spanish padres. Each mission has its own colorful story, more than we have time for now, but you can read about them in your history books. All of the missions of the Southwest were built to extend the colonial power of Spain into this new and unsettled land. The Padres selected mission sites that had fertile soil available water and building materials, and most important of all, enough Indians to establish the mission communities. But the Indians were not always willing to accept a new way of life, and many missions were raided and burned as the Padres struggled to gain a foothold in the wild land. As a mission became firmly established, the Padres directed their Indian neophytes in the building and decorating of a church, for the bringing of Christianity to the Indians was one of the major concerns of the Padres. But the missionaries were concerned with more than religious faith. They also taught their neophytes to use new tools and how to farm the land. Soon grain fields were flourishing and were harvested to feed the mission community. Fruit orchards and vineyards were planted 
and livestock grazed on the hillsides. As the missions prospered, settlers from Mexico were encouraged to move north to establish new settlements and help strengthen Spain's claim to the southwest. The road that once linked the missions and became known as El Camino Real disappeared long ago. Now modern highways have replaced the roads the Padres once traveled. Many missions of the Southwest have disappeared or stand in ruins, slowly eroding back into the earth from which they were made. Other mission buildings, especially the 21 of Alta California, have been partially restored to their former grandeur. Some, such as Mission San Luis Obispo, stand half hidden by the cities that have grown around them. San Antonio and a few others retain some of their isolation living symbols of a story that began more than 200 years ago. Whether you visit a restored mission, such as San Francisco de Assis in California, or visit ruins such as these at Tumacacari in Arizona, you can still see the burned tile and adobe bricks used to build the walls so long ago. The thick walls were plastered with lime stucco to protect the soft adobe bricks from the weather. Each mission feature reveals the simple design and hand workmanship typical of the mission period. The thick walls permitted decorative window openings. Long Moorish windows were built at San Gabriel, and star windows are found at Carmel and San Rafael. Roof tiles were first made at San Luis Obispo, and later were used at all the missions of Alta California. The heavy tiles were laid over a framework of log beams and wild cane lashed together with rawhide thongs. Many of the mission buildings were built around an enclosed patio, and all featured the arcade or covered corridor common to Spain and Mexico. The arches of the arcades at many missions were supported by pillars of adobe or burned brick. The arcade provided a shady outdoor hallway and also protected the adobe walls from the rain. In mission times, the ringing of bells regulated the lives of Indians and Spaniards alike. The bells called them to work as well as to worship. At some missions, the bells were hung in a campanario or bell wall. The campanario at San Gabriel was an extension of the church wall with openings for the bells. At other missions, bell towers were used, rising one or two stories above the church wall. Although the padres were often limited by a lack of materials and skilled labor, they were able to erect buildings that duplicated many features they remembered from the elaborate churches of Mexico and Spain. To decorate the plain adobe walls, painted designs were used around door and window openings in place of carved stone or decorative tile. Sandstone was available at San Javier in Arizona and was carved to form an elaborate ornamental front for the church.
The mission at Santa Barbara, now completely rebuilt, has stately columns and geometrical lines copied from Roman architecture. The original missions were much more than a church. Each was a small industrial community that employed hundreds of Indians. Although most of the buildings have disappeared, we can still see remains of the missions as they were long ago. Weathered floors mark the site of once active shops. Grinding stones suggest the harvest of long forgotten grain fields. Tanning vats, olive presses, and the ruins of fire pits where tallow and iron were once melted are all that is left of typical mission industries. A visit to any of the old missions is truly a journey into the past. But the missions still live, and many play an active role in today's modern world. San Javier in Arizona continues to serve the Papago Indian tribe for whom it was originally built. Much as it did long ago, the mission provides them with the skills and knowledge necessary to live and work in a changing world. Many missions also continue to serve as cultural and social centers, recalling the colorful heritage of Spain and Mexico and a way of life which is still a part of the present-day Southwest. San Carlos, San Buenaventura, San Miguel, and many others are still active churches concerned with the religious faith of the communities in which they stand. missions are living reminders of Spanish influence in the Southwest. They remain as a symbol of the courage and resourcefulness of those who settled here more than 200 years ago.